I'm William Cornell. I'm from really Bloomington, fun. Indiana, and this is my presentation on film noir. It was real fun. Oh. is easy to recognize but hard to define. We often describe it by listing characteristics of films that we view as noirs. However, there are always films that we think of as noirs that lack in many of these characteristics. This illustrates how ambiguous the idea of noir really is. Ultimately, there is no clear definition, no definitive origin, and surely no end in sight concerning the production of noir films. Whatever this thing that we call noir is, it's typically thought of as an American film genre that grew out of the combination of hard-boiled fiction and German expressionism, began around 1941 and ended in the late 1950s, and is characterized by expressionist declining styles, urban decor, hard-boiled dialogue, build my gallows high, baby, femme fatales, corrupt authorities, sympathetic criminals, and moral and sexual ambiguity. Don't leave me dead. He's dead. While these narrative and aesthetic characteristics are indeed common in many noirs, and many historical noirs are adaptations of hard-boiled fiction, I would argue that film noir does not fit within the confines of an historical era or genre, and that it is truly an international phenomenon, citing the British film The Third Man, and the fact that the idea of film noir is a French invention, termed by film critics who are referring to an international style. Films that can be classified as noirs have existed since the birth of Hollywood, but it wasn't until the era of historical noir from 1941 to 1958 that these films became an expansive part of popular cinema, According to the French film critic Borden Chemetin, film noir grew out of revelations about violence that resulted from World War II, a rising crime rate in America, and the institutionalization of psychoanalysis. Another important factor was the prevalence of existentialist philosophies among Hollywood filmmakers at the time, which contributed to noir's cynical treatment of bourgeois culture and the American dream, as well as a lack of faith in authority figures who seemed to perpetuate the American mythology. The sociological dynamic can be seen in the way that crime thrillers evolved from a genre centered around a whodunit mystery featuring an incorruptible thinking machine of a detective and noir films that use the mystery as a way to explore the psychology of criminals and deeply flawed heroes. Following World War II, the French experienced a huge influx of Hollywood films that had been made during the war. They were able to view these films in rapid succession, which allowed them to connect the conceptual dots and form noir as an intellectual category used to classify these perverse Hollywood melodramas. The age of historical noir came to a close with the decentralization of the studio system and the Red Scare, which led to the blacklisting of many filmmakers who had been involved in the production of noirs. It wasn't until the 1970s that noir became a part of the cultural vocabulary in America, which was largely due to the enthusiasm of film cults and college film societies that studied the French film critics that birthed the idea of noir and the Hollywood films that they used the term to describe. This led to the production of neo-noirs like David Lynch's Blue Velvet, which may be better described as a suburban melodrama that plunges into the dark and dangerous world of noir and somehow manages to find its way out. Without the censorship that helped to give historical noir its relative subtlety, Lynch was able to expand the noir themes of perverse sex, Hit me. ritualistic brutality, violent eroticism, class divide, and sexual and moral ambiguity, while still incorporating aesthetic elements that help to give noir's dreamlike quality. The film even seems to comment on the nightmare state of noir by including Roy Orbison's in dreams and scenes that are heavy with sexual malaise and brutal violence. No! continues to evolve today with new styles like neon noir, and there's no reason to think that the production of noirs and their cultural significance will come to an end anytime soon. Noir is an idea that has always existed, and it seems to have found its perfect home in filmmaking.